comfortable with the uh, the video being recorded, uh, now would be your time to bail. <laughs> um, okay, so with the, the stage being set, we've got our first time contributor here, Throwaway004. That's gonna be in this uh, incognito window. And over on the right, we've got uh, me as a maintainer, and I will be looking at the Peril Gatsby and looking at the pull requests. And Marissa, go ahead and take it away. Okay. So that first time contributor is going to come and they're going to um, contribute something. And then once um, all their checks have passed and everything looks okay, a maintainer is going to go in and approve that PR um, and, and say, okay, you've done everything that you need to do. So from there, they're going to get, um, um, the maintainer is going to merge that PR and then uh, Gatsbot is going to come up and say to them, hello, look at all the great things you've done. Um, and you can see here, it's a little bit small, but there are some instructions and explanation of what's happening. So there's two things happening right now. Um, we're one, thanking them, thanking people for coming in and um, contributing. So in order to thank them, we want to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to give them a link to the Gatsby swag store. So these are instructions on what to do once they see that message. So there's, um, we can do that first and then come back. So uh, the person will go to the Gatsby swag store and pull it up and it's gonna do this new window where you're gonna see a, a dashboard um, that has a swag store link and a dashboard link. And it allows them to be able to um, get something and add it to their cart. So um, they're going to go do that, go to the swag link, swag link um, and the contributor is going to log in with their GitHub account on the top right here. So this is uh, just authorizing them to go in. And once they do that, takes a second here, and they'll be able to claim a discount code. And so when they hit that button, it's going to give them the discount code that they can then use on the store to be able to uh, purchase something. So go in and select your purchase, yep. And when you go to check out, it's gonna take care of everything for you um, and make sure that all of the, um, you've, you've put it in and then you put the discount in. So the build with Gatsby. We, well, we have to start with uh, the email. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, I really hope this doesn't fight us here. Uh, <laughs> so the, the, the catch with this is that the discount code is only allowed to be applied once per person. Um, yeah. So there's a chance here that it's gonna tell me I've already used it. So <laughs> if we had an account that was fresh, it would, uh, it would apply this discount code. This would go to zero and we'd be able to check out. But since I've already used it with my email, uh, we're going to have to just pretend that happened. Jason, can um, you use the throwaway email? I, so it doesn't like the, the throwaway email. Didn't let me try it. Let's see. Uh, zero, zero, four. Four. It doesn't like the plus. It like wanted to tell me that it wasn't a valid email address. Yeah, yeah so it doesn't, it, it thinks oh, the plus. Okay. It did it. It did it. Oh, it did it anyways. Perfect. Yeah. So there we go. Now oh. we've got a, <laughs> we've got a discount code. Odd. Okay. Um, and, and if we were to, I guess I can just go ahead and go through here. Um, and so at this point, we're just using Shopify. And yeah. this is great because it's going to like look up my address for me. Please don't stalk me now that I'm putting my information on the internet. Um, continue. We're going to we're gonna send you a whole bunch more uh, whiteboards. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is, and this is actually good. So, hey, Marissa, our, our goals to keep people from ordering before we had swag to ship have finally, uh, it finally worked. <laughs> <laughs> right in time for the demo. So perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yay. Good. Um, uh, so then that would be how you would order. And then okay. um, when you go back, now what's going to happen simultaneously is there's going to be an email that's going to invite you to join as um, a maintainer on the Gatsby organization. So this is going to happen at the same time. So now if you go to the email, you'll be so able to I'm, see that. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of cheating on this because I'm using my Gatsby email. Um, but so we got invited as throwaway. Let me minimize that. We got invited as throwaway to, uh, to join the Gatsby org. So because I'm kind of playing a weird game of, of being two people, I'm gonna copy this and paste it into my incognito window. 
It invites me to join Gatsby JS. And I'm now a maintainer. I can see our teams. So that adds you as a maintainer and allows you to be added to that list and do everything that you would be able to do as a maintainer. So there's going to be onboarding there, I think, um, in future. But yeah, we're going to add we're going to add more. But you can see here that after clicking that link, Throwaway04 is now hooked up to the repo mm -hmm. as a, an org maintainer. And so that's the uh, kind of the workflow. Um, so technically what's happening under the hood to, uh, to shift gears is we have a, a pretty simple, uh, not simple, it's a, it's a fairly straightforward app. So we've got our, um, our index page, which is the store, and the store is built up of these components here. So we've got the store itself, which is just kind of showing basic info. Let me hide the terminal so we can see more. Um, so it's showing basic info about the store. We get into the product listings. Um, the product listings themselves are using a static query, uh, which static query is a new feature of Gatsby V2 that allows us to make queries directly in the places where we're actually accessing data instead of having to make that query in the page and pass it all the way down through all of our intermediate uh, components. So we've got our query, which digs into the Shopify store. And that Shopify query then gives us our products, which we're able to drop into our product previews. Um, the product previews, there's, there's not a whole lot going on there. If you, if you wanna look into the code, it's all public now. Um, you can pull it up on, where are you? One of these, here. Um, Store.gatsbyjs.org on the Gatsby.js org. Um, you'll be able to, to kind of dig in and see all of this source code. Um, the auth is pretty cool. We're using auth zero for this. And so we just set up uh, a couple checks because Gatsby has to be able to server side render. So we're not using auth JS on the server side at all because that would be a fool's errand. So instead we, uh, we only try to render auth zero at all if, uh, if we are in the browser. Um, and the way that we're managing that is by specifying that we're doing dynamic, uh, so client only routes for the account and uh, the account route on our client app. So inside the auth, um, we set up our auth, we you know, authorize people with a login function, we've got a logout function and a couple other things here like uh, getting the access token, getting the user's info and all of that rolls up into the shared components like for example, our, um, our header. So we've got a profile here, um, we're using the, the React context API that just got uh, updated. So we use that user context to grab out the profile and then we're able to display their info and all those good things. The uh, context itself is set up with, you know, some of our defaults. We've got the, the GitHub API. We're making a query to see if that person is, has a merged PR. So we're just using a, a pretty simple issue search to make that happen. Um, we check the total number of their contributions. Um, we've got some, we've got a custom endpoint here, which I'll go through in a second. Uh, how's our time? Yeah, we'll go through that in a second to make sure that we uh, are able to kind of check that they are in fact a contributor, go to Shopify, register them as, as a customer so that their email address is whitelisted and then um, supply that discount code. Um, and then outside of that, you know, our layout. So um, in Gatsby V2, we remove the magic layout components. So instead we have to uh, explicitly include this. Um, so we've got emotion here to set up our styles and we then um, define like the default user context is the one that we've already created, but then we add some dynamic functions that rely on state. So for example, we pull in this, the user from state um, to make sure that's always available and uh, define this handle user or get discount code and handle logout in the layout um, and provide that to our context. So if we look down in the, uh, the context provider, then we drop in the user state. And then we do the same thing for the store. We drop in the store state because Shopify's API is giving us like a checkout ID and, and the items in our cart so that we're able to persist those across page loads. Um, so all of this is, uh, is, you know, these are kind of advanced concepts because we're digging into the new React Context API. Uh, we're digging into hooking together a lot of different systems. The approach that we took was to try to be as simple as possible. We didn't want to add a lot of third-party libraries where you know, something like a built-in context provider could, could solve that problem for us. So you'll notice we're not using Redux. 
Uh, we're not using, um, you know, Apollo or Relay or any of those. We're, we just wanted to stick nice and, and simple and few dependencies. So with that being said, let's dive into the API. Um, our API is as simple as I could make it. Um, so we set up some environment variables. This is the example. Uh, I'm really glad it was the example and not the actual dot <laughs> end. Um, but so we've got a, a pretty as straightforward a pattern as I could make, which was to define an app and define a server. The app itself um, is, that's a test, not the app, um, pulls in JOT tokens and, uh, and like role, I can't remember exactly how this works. It, uh, so it pulls in like the secret verification. Um, this is all auth zero stuff that I only uh, tangentially understand. So uh, thanks to those guys for making my life much easier. Um, so what we're doing is we're pulling in our environment variables, we're setting up an express app, and then we just add in things like cross origin uh, requests, uh, the body parser so we can get, um, you know, the, the different responses from uh, like posts and pull requests. We make sure that our, our JOT token is actually valid. Um, the JOT token, when you log in with GitHub to the client app, that's going to give you a JOT token that you can then pass around to different services. And we're just making sure that for our REST API, you can only access this API if you have a valid JOT token from the Gatsby store. Um, the store itself is a route. So we pull that in from routes and that's here. Uh, so here, what we're doing is um, we've got a couple fun helper functions. So are they a GitHub contributor? We wanna be able to create a Shopify customer and add a MailChimp subscriber. Um, in here, we grab out details from the body. So we, uh, in, from the client, we send over the username, email, first name, and last name, which we're pulling out of the, the GitHub profile. And then we check whether or not they're a contributor. If they're not a contributor, we just send back a, like a 200, but with an error, because it's not, we don't wanna break anything, but we do wanna let the, the UI know that, hey, this isn't a contributor. Um, then we, if they are a contributor, we get to here, check if they're a customer. So we, we create them as a customer, and then we add them as a MailChimp subscriber, and then send back all these values. So are they a contributor? Did the customer creation work? Are they subscribed? And uh, what's their discount code? And because we're whitelisting per email, these discount code, the discount code is the same, but it only works if you are a contributor and you've gone through this step of, of validating. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the gist of it. Uh, we're using Axios for simple put and post requests. Um, you know, in MailChimp, for example, we have to do things like create a hash of the user. Um, you have to include the API key as an auth parameter on Axios. And uh, then you send in things like the, you know, the merge fields and all that good stuff. Um, but overall, it's just kind of teeing up and then sending out the, um, the individual endpoints we need to hit so that we're able to do things like putting them in as a, a customer. Um, and then we've got some error checks. Like if somebody's already registered, we, um, we don't wanna fail. We just, we say, oh, they are in fact already registered. So just send back the, the true because that's what we want is for them to be registered, not for them to be registered in that particular request. Um, so that's kind of the, the overarching view. And with that, we've got about four minutes left. Does anybody have questions or anything in particular they want to dig into? I had a question. Um, just curious, can oh people, oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is Shannon. Um, just wondering if you, if there are use cases where people would want to log in without GitHub and if that is, if so, is it possible to do so? I'm just thinking of people who are like, well, it, you know, like, I don't know, my grandma <laughs> might want a t-shirt, you know, and she wouldn't so, log in with GitHub. So we're, that's on our roadmap. Um, on the, the store, uh, where's the store? We have some open issues. And, and one of the issues that we need to figure out is how to allow non GitHub contributors to, um, to get swag. And yeah. there are a few ways that we're, we're looking at doing that. Um, but we're not, we haven't like landed on one. So the, so there's ongoing okay. work here. Um, yeah. we're, but, we're trying to find a, like a simple solution that would work for most cases, but that's something that I was wondering too, Shannon is like, 
not everyone is going to be on GitHub necessarily that would want to get swag. So how do we how do we allow them to still do that? There's also but, some questions around Carol. Um, so I want to make sure we keep us on track. But there are two ch things in the chat um, to do a deep dive a little bit on Carol, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me do that. Um, so let's go to GitHub.com. This is all public, by the way. So Gatsby.js, Peril. Um, so the way that Peril works, Peril feels like magic. Um, we got an amazing amount of help from Steven Deutsch. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, he helped me set this up and, uh, and walk me through a lot of how this works. But so Peril is a, it's, it hooks up to webhooks and based on those webhooks, we're able to do things. So in our particular case, we are having it look at, um, if the PR comes in, um, I'll show you the, the config first. So the peril settings, it says on a merged pull request, we want to run invite collaborator.ts. So we jump in, get to invite collaborator.ts, and that's going to receive, um, there's some setup here like this wrap function, um, and that's to allow like testing and, and it's kind of just a way to, to make things a little easier. But so we get um, a danger global that gives us just kind of the stuff that we're working on. So uh, the, the GitHub object allows us to get at the PR. Um, in the PR, this is just the, the value of the webhook. So we get the PR owner, the repo, what the number of the PR was, who the user is, a bunch of other things. And then we're gonna check to see, have they already been invited to the org? Um, if they've already been invited to our maintainers team, then we, uh, we just kind of don't do anything because there's nothing to do. But if they haven't been invited, then we go in and we send them this message. Um, we send off the invite and then we log some stuff so that we know what's going on. Um, and then this down here is Peril's way of getting in and it, it just uses the OctaKit REST plugin. And that allows us to, um, to create a comment on the GitHub uh, repo using the, the owner is Gatsby.js, the repo would be in this case, Peril.js. The number would be the, the number of the PR and the comment is what we defined up here, this, uh, this holy buckets thing. Um, so that's, that's kind of a very quick overview of how Peril is working kind of in, in a general sense. It's capable of doing some really cool things. Like we can auto label issues, we can auto close issues, we can request additional information like this uh, empty body back here. If somebody sends a message that doesn't have any details, we can actually send back uh, a request. that's like, hey, you opened an empty issue, please add more detail. Um, so that's, that's kind of a super fast version. And we're technically out of time. So if anybody wants to jump, feel free. Uh, I can take another five minutes or so to answer questions. The only thing Must I was curious. Oh, hey, the only thing I was curious about too, which I think would just probably be better for another time, but I'm just um, curious about the maintainer onboarding once they do land on. Um, I know you guys are like, yeah, going to work on that later, but happy to Marissa, be a sound. why don't you take that? Yeah. Yeah, so I, um, we've been thinking about that because there obviously needs to be kind of a step-by-step -step, um, instruction for people if they're, if they're, there are a few assumptions that we kind of need to account for. So obviously they'd, they'd be a first time contributor to Gatsby, but also it would be great if as a maintainer, we're helping them understand just in general how a landscape works um, in GitHub too. So um, for onboarding, I think it's probably gonna be a multi-step process to make sure that it is a, a robust system. But at the very beginning, what I think we could do is just have a few steps to help them understand like, okay, now I'm here as a maintainer, right? I'm on this okay. new, in this new area. So what, what are my immediate next steps? So giving you, them you know, a one, two, three thing that lets them know where they can go. Yeah. Be really just to begin with. Can yeah, you talk a little cool. bit about the, the onboarding we've actually put in place, like the MailChimp stuff? Yeah, so what we've got on um, in MailChimp right now is there's going to be um, an email sequence that goes out to people. So they've, they've joined as a maintainer, right? And they're going to get that initial email that helps them get on the list. And then from there, they're going to get a welcome email. And then throughout the next, I think, 
right now it's like 15 days, there's going to be some, um, two or three additional emails that they're going to get that oh. says like, hey, thank you so much for coming here. Here are two ways you can contribute. Um, and it allows them to like click back in and, and go in and add some more. So those were the ones that we talked about for, um, in that meeting the other day. Yeah. 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 I love that. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm, I, it's not even so much a question as just like, I'm always fascinated by onboarding stuff and love to, I just like to talk about it. So. <laughs> and I think that's probably going to change a little bit as we go along because we're going to be able to find new ways to kind of integrate and make, we make like contextual pull requests mm -hmm. for people say like, Hey, we know that you helped with this. Here's another thing that's very similar that you could help with. So anyway, it'll, it'll definitely grow, um, that's which will awesome. be exciting. Hey, it, would, it might be cool. Like Kyle, Kyle and I were talking about this morning, like maybe, or I, I was talking to Kyle um, about perhaps like a credit system, like maybe not automatic, but just like, you know, if our DevRel guy or one of the open source people thinks that this PR is like super valuable, just like automatically crediting their store account. And instead of like the store relying on just currency, there could be some sort of credit balance because then it would be like kind of gamified and addictive. So Marissa actually has a really cool idea around this. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so I think that I totally agree with that. Um, I think that that's a great way to be able to get people to um, kind of grow through that environment, um, gamifying it. And what we've been talking about is doing something like a badge system. So there would, it would be just like, a, just like a game. As you're going through, you do a few things and you get either like a new skill or um, in some cases like a new thing. Um, and in this case, it could be a new badge and you'd have badge levels that you would go through. So it would be a full gamified system that would kind of level you up as you go. And then the dashboard becomes a way for you to kind of track your own progress um, and eventually maybe have a little bit of context, context to be able to track your progress against other people as well. So yeah, and, totally agree that, that would be awesome. And, and cool to your point, Andrew. With like, loot. like you unlocked loot, which is like a gadget. It, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I, I think there's a, there's like a really fun discussion about that, that, uh, that like we, it was out of the scope for the first launch, but we absolutely want to get back into that. Cause another thing that I want to do is I want to empower any maintainer, not, not just the ink team, but like anybody who maintains Gatsby to like reward swag to people who are doing cool things. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we want to figure out is like, how do I requisition a, a discount code that I can send to, like this person who like did a talk about Gatsby and they can then take that and trade that discount code for, you know, whatever, a t-shirt, a hoodie, whatever we have. Um, yeah. So there, there are a lot of different ways that we want to tackle that, but we're not, we haven't had the time to really think through it or, or come up with a logistical solution. It's, it's just kind of like a, this would be great and we hope we can do it. It's also just like a product in of itself. So it really is like, this is, yeah. this could, <laughs> this could absolutely be a startup. Like the, 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 the management of open source and rewarding contributors for, for contribution. Like I think Sean, uh, Sean Wang was, was saying like, this, this is a startup. It's a product. Isn't there like a gamification as a, as a service kind of thing somewhere? Yeah, yeah there are probably. Yeah. Yeah. I guess but, we can uh, use something yeah. like if there's a backend that we can use already, then we don't have to build a lot of it. We can sure. Just yeah. It. Yeah, there's there's a lot of research to be done. I'm I'm hoping that we can spin up a like a V2 of this, um, so to like do a phase two on the swag store and just add more of the fun stuff that we want to do and and uh, implement a lot of the feedback we've been getting. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So with that being said, we're at uh, at 11:26. Um, I have a I have a meeting in four minutes, so I got to go and prep for that. But um, if anybody has additional questions, please open issues on the repo. Uh, Store.gatsbyjs.org is the repo to open issues on. Send me anything on Twitter. Uh, tweet at GatsbyJS on Twitter. Uh, or just, you know, in general, reach out to us. My email is jason at GatsbyJS.com if you don't want to do it in public. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for coming in today. The recording of this will be posted at some point today. I'll, I'll tweet about it and post it to the maintainer uh, group as well. Wonderful. Thanks ever so much. Oh, looks yeah, awesome. Thanks, everybody. That was an awesome demo. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> we'll see you. Bye. Cheers. Hey, bye.